WBZ4 reported in the late evening of September 11th, stating local government sources believe that the attacks launched from Logan Airport was an inside job. And throughout this film, there will be more WBZ4 exclusive coverage on the 9-11 investigation that most of the public is not familiar with. Because before the destruction and the loss of life, when it comes to visibly backtracking where the attacks are initiated from, having come from three airports, it was later determined that there were 19 hijackers amongst the four flights, and they used box cutters to kill passengers, flight crew, and take control of the planes. But to determine is not the same as to confirm. But right after the attacks, there were numerous anomalies clearly making it difficult for government authorities to immediately identify these suspected 19 hijackers based upon early news reports and interviews with victims' families and airline personnel who received the phone calls from the doomed hijacked flights. As for full names and identities of the 19 hijackers, 15 of them being Saudi nationals, two from the United Arab Emirates, one from Lebanon and the other from Egypt, this complete set and their photos was not made public until September 27, 2001, over two weeks later. Three of the non-Saudi hijackers soon were deemed by investigative authorities at the time as the masterminding ringleaders of the whole terrorist operation, famously dubbed as the Hamburg Cell, due to the report of entry coming into the country originally from Germany. And essentially, most of these hijackers are the central figures this film will be underlining. Because the following day, after 9-11, on September 12th, Around 2.15 p.m. with ABC News already reporting that there were 12 hijackers identified, Brian Ross reports about the immediate FBI dragnet going on in the northern New England states where he verbally releases one of the names of the identified hijackers, which ends up being Flight 11 hijacker Mohammed Atta. Well, here is some information that is quite hard. The uh, discovery of the car last night in the Boston airport uh, led uh, FBI agents to a man they have told us was one of the terrorist hijackers, an Egyptian national by the name of Mohammed Atta, who apparently was on the INS watch list. It was Mr. Atta who spent the summer of 2000 in Venice, Florida, with another man learning how to fly at uh, the Huffman Aviation Service in Venice. Nearly an hour and a half later, at 3.45 p.m., the FBI and Attorney General John Ashcroft, having no flight manifest or list of hijacker names to release amongst the four flights, only stated that there was a ratio of three to six hijackers per plane, where subsequently some of the news sources began stating that there was a scale of 12 to 24 hijackers. The four planes were hijacked by between three and six individuals per plane using knives and box cutters and in some cases making bomb threats. Following that, on September 13th, as early as 9.22 a.m., NBC first shows a photo of Mohammed Atta while reporting on some of the flight schools he attended in Florida. Other news sources later in the day will additionally show a photo of Marwan al Shehi, also claiming him to be his cousin, essentially the media only making two official hijacker photos public. At 12.57 p.m., the FBI and Attorney General, during the second press conference still having no flight manifest or list of hijacker names, changed the ratio of suspects on each plane from four to five hijackers per plane, but could only state that there were 18 hijackers throughout the four flights. And last but not least, the total number of hijackers, to our best uh, estimate and our best knowledge given the information at this time, on the four planes that crashed was at least 18 unless contradicted by uh, evidence which uh, we wouldn't anticipate. Uh, two planes had five hijackers and two other planes had four hijackers each. The following morning on September 14th, CNN was able to first pick up the names of the 18 hijackers, which had shown that the pilot hijacker Hani Hanjour of Flight 77, the plane that struck the Pentagon, was missing. But in the afternoon, after the prayer and remembrance services, CNN and ABC News released the official scale of 19 hijacking suspects included with Han Jor, but for some reason momentarily indicated on ABC's list of 19 hijacker names, had also included seat and passenger numbers, but United Airlines flights 93 and 175 did not include seat numbers at all. But an anomaly still occurs on the two American Airlines flights. On flight 77, the alleged pilot hijacker Hani Han Jor neither has a passenger or seat number listed for his name, while Nawaf al-Hazmi only has a passenger number, but no seat number provided. And on Flight 11, all the seat and passenger numbers are listed for the five hijackers, except for the alleged team leader and pilot, Mohammed Atta. 
who only has a seat number. 30 minutes later, the FBI and Attorney General held their third press conference, making all 19 hijacker names official amongst the four airliners. But five hours later, at 8.21 p.m., ABC News and Brian Ross, continuing to cover the dragnet, demonstrate CGI models of the four airliners in an attempt to show which hijackers were on each flight and seated, except for the United Airlines flights, which authorities hadn't provided yet. But when it came to the American Airlines flights, again, no seat numbers are provided for Hanjour and no Waffle Hazmi on flight 77. But now on flight 11, Hanta has seat numbers, but Abdelaziz Alamari is missing, basically only displaying four hijackers instead of five. Two days later, on the early morning of September 16th, around 1.30 a.m., CNN now becomes the first network up until this point to release a bulk of the hijacking identities in which so far, only two accurate photos of hijackers are publicly shown, one of Marwan al-Shehi and the other famous scowling photo of Mohammed Atta. <clears throat> The U.S. Justice Department has also released photographs now. But CNN was only able to provide photos of eight individuals believed to be suspects from only three of the four hijacked planes, excluding Flight 77 that hit the Pentagon. However, there becomes a problem with the eight photos they show. Three of the photo identities of hijacking suspects are actually Saudi Airlines pilots who were alive in Saudi Arabia, Tunisia, and Morocco, having similar tribal names of the hijackers but claimed to have their ID stolen. Saeed El Ghamni, the pilot from Tunisia, was alive and his photo was displayed as being thought of as the official Flight 93 hijacker, Saeed El Ghamni from Florida. On the set of Flight 11 identities, on the bottom right corner, the photo for Abdelaziz Al Omari is actually Abdul Rahman Al Omari, who was also found alive in Saudi Arabia and interviewed there five days later by CNN on September 21st after having just relocated there from Vero Beach, Florida, just days before 9-11. And the other thought to be Flight 11 hijacker, on the top right hand corner, Whale Al-Shari is actually the living Walid Ahmed Al-Shari that lived in Morocco, whose photo is instead represented as the official Whale Al-Shari, the actual brother of Walid Mohammed Al-Shari. These stolen IDs and mix-ups basically escalated into the myth by conspiracy theorists that four of the seven hijackers were alive after September 11th. But in hindsight, what does this say about the authorities or CNN only showing a partial roster of hijacker photos for three of the four flights, but screw up on demonstrating at least three hijacker identities who actually turned out being alive? Well, we know certainly by then, the FBI already had plenty of time to seize the security CCTV videos from Boston Logan and Newark airports and should have been able to visibly identify all the hijackers boarding from the departure areas based on the flight manifest so to avoid any misinformation or misleading the public. What's also unusual about this September 15th CNN report, when accounting all 4911 flights in what becomes the official story, is that none of the CCTV security videos from Boston Logan and Newark airports have ever been made public except when it comes to Flight 77 for the Pentagon attack, which again, with authorities having flight manifests, none of the hijacker photos from that flight are shown in this report that day. But the screw-up with the charting the living Abdul Rahman al Omari being on Flight 11 with Mohammed Atta is a perplexing mistake, being that the actual Abdul Aziz al Omari, alleged to have been on the flight, will be shown on surveillance video with Atta three days later, but two days before on September 18th, things became really twisted as the only possible case for real living hijackers is reported from ABC News by Mohammed Atta's father in Egypt. He was killed, I do not know, but he called me a few days ago after the attack. Do you see me sad? The FBI says unless he pulled a last minute switch, Atta died as he planned when his plane crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. On September 19th, practically all the news sources released CCTV video at Portland International Jetport in Maine on September 11th, capturing hijackers Atta and Alamari about to board their connecting flight to Logan. On September 22nd, 2001, just five days before all the hijacker photos were made public, Time Magazine's website published an exclusive article titled, An Inside Job? U.S. officials are compiling what one called growing evidence that other hijackings may have been planned for September 11. Officials from both the government and the airline industry tell Time Magazine that a knife-like weapon was found on each of two separate Delta Airlines aircraft later that day, 
Although neither plane took off due to the nationwide grounding after the World Trade Center and Pentagon attacks on hijacked United and American Airlines planes, government sources would not describe in detail the nature of the weapons found on the Delta flights last week. But one official disclosed that another weapon was discovered on at least on other aircraft owned by a fourth airline. The government official refused to name that carrier. Investigators are not yet certain how these weapons came to be on board the aircraft, but they are increasingly believing that the weapons may have been prepositioned by accomplices for use by others. As one U.S. official told Time, these look like inside jobs. The new evidence is causing officials to broaden their investigative and security efforts to encompass not only the carry-on bag screening system, but the entire aviation security apparatus at U.S. airports. The new evidence raises the worrisome possibility that the hijackers may have had accomplices deep within the secure areas of airports that may include the shops and restaurants in the terminal behind the metal detectors or amongst the thousands of people who work in catering, fueling, or cleaning aircraft or anyone who might have access to the airplane before takeoff. Other hijackings may have been planned for September 11? Inside jobs? Accomplices deep within secure areas of airports? So many questions remain, but no answers. Why isn't there any security CCTV video released from Logan Airport? Especially when the most vivid and memorable part of the attacks were the airliners crashing into the World Trade Center filled with passengers. A sensitive priority as one would imagine, as nothing should be in the way for the public to see, as far as where those flights took off from. But yet, over a week later, authorities are barely able to release Four security videos still capturing hijacker Atta and Alamari at Jetport, Maine. The previous airport they depart from, just landing at Logan, to subsequently connect and hijack American Airlines Flight 11 to strike the World Trade Center first? And a better question, why did Atta and Alamari travel out of the way on September 10th to Portland, Maine, the day before 9-11, further complicating their mission, rather than just board Flight 11 at Logan, since they had already been in Boston on 9-10, where Otta had rented the cars from.